In this lecture, we would be discussing about the blast furnace productivity. So, blast furnace productivity uh, is defined as the ratio of the amount of coke 1 uh, that is coke throughput or coke burning rate per day to the coke consumed for a unit of iron that is coke consumption rate in tons per ton of hot metal. So, we can say P the productivity is equal to the amount of coke point Q divided by K that is coke consumed per unit of iron or coke consumption rate. So, where P is given in uh, ton hot metal per day, Q equal to the coke burned in tons per day and coke consumed in tons per ton of hot metal is uh, given by K. There are various ways this productivity can be defined. Uh, so, this is one of the way commonly used, but there are many other ways by which uh, it can be defined. So, the other way of defining it in terms of <coughs> heat input. So, productivity uh, is a ratio of total heat input per day to heat required to produce 1 ton of hot metal. So, heat input per day the heat required to produce 1 ton of hot metal <coughs> and <coughs> another definition of productivity is excuse me <coughs> is uh, uh, in terms of rate of production ton of hot metal per day divided by working volume of the furnace in meter cube. So, when we say the working volume of the furnace, uh, this we have defined before in the beginning of this course. As such, the working volume is from 2 year to stock line um, that we take in calculation of this productivity definition. Um, nowadays, because we use quite a bit. Um, um, gas and uh, um, PCI uh, those are, uh, fuel and other thing. So, there is another way of defining the productivity uh, which took care of uh, uh, this fuel such as coal and oil. So, since coke is increasingly being replaced by auxiliary fuel such as coal, oil etcetera even some natural gases. So, it is appropriate to define the productivity now as total to your gas produced per day divided by to your gas generated to, produ to produce 1 ton hot metal. So, it is a ratio of to your gas produced per day and the gas generated to produce 1 ton of hot metal. So, sometime it is uh, related. Uh, uh, also to the hearth volume which as such does not give the correct physical chemical representation of the productivity. So, there are many ways by which uh, as you can see the productivity of the furnace has been defined, um, but mostly uh, this is a good way of defining the productivity in terms of coke burning now because the coke burning the now, it is being replaced quite a bit with uh, PCI or fuel and like that. If that is the case, then this would be a good definition of the productivity. <coughs> so, blast furnace is a gas solid count counter current reactor and its productivity depends on how much you blow into it. So, how much air actually you can blow into it. However, the furnace can be driven to maximum pressure drop and after that the process 
deteriorate. So, there is a maximum pressure drop across the whole furnace and um, <coughs> above that if you keep it then the furnace will deteriorate and your productivity will decrease. The above two factors depends on many parameters. So, <coughs> next slide shows how the productivity of the blast furnace can be increased considering the effect of various parameter. So, as, as you can know <coughs> there are two things how much you can blow into the furnace and the maximum pressure drop uh, which you can uh, <coughs> reach safely without affecting the productivity. So, these two parameter how do they uh, get affected by uh, other parameter we will see in this uh, slide. So, this is about <coughs> if you want to increase the productivity then as we saw in the first definition is that uh, you de uh, decrease this and increase Q. So, increase Q means the amount of coke per 1 per day that if it is increased productivity it increases or coke consumption rate tons per ton of hot matter it should be decreased then you can get the higher productivity. <coughs> so, that is why how we can decrease the coke rate. So, it is a burden preparation screening sizing agglomeration. So, use of hydrogen wear, uh, wear uh, uh, material or so in this one because hydrogen has high reduction potential. So, it is then beneficial it will decrease the coke rate improve gas solid contact. So, if surface area can be increased and keeping the proper size uh, of the material free fluxed agglomerate. So, you agglomerate and use the fluxing agent. So, in that way also you can decrease the coke rate for pre fluxing you use the agglomeration sintering and other other thing. So, also if you increase the blast temperature that will also lead to decrease in coke rate. Uh, most of these factor we have discussed before uh, now we are talking in terms of how they will affect the productivity fuel injection of course, that also again you are substituting so, uh, so that we uh, uh, the fu uh, fuel the, so it will reduce the coke rate increase in direct re reduction. <coughs> we had discussed this one um, in details about the contribution of direct reduction and indirect reduction in, uh, um, uh, in the production of iron and what would be the optimum value of both of that. So, one can do that one and that is going to decrease the coke rate if one can achieve that optimum uh, in indirect indirect reduction um, uh, reaction and so that this leads to decrease thermal load. So, this all is uh, going to decrease your coke rate your productivity is going to increase. On the other end it is about the P, uh, Q factor which coke throw, throughput which we said. So, that if we can increase Q naturally our productivity increase and how the Q is affected by other parameter one sizing beneficiation mechanical strength lower slag. Uh, of course, sizing is very important uh, and beneficiation is also important if you take care at this stage you can reduce slag volume. So, you uh, do not have to put that much uh, your silica or lime. So, the slag volume also will decrease and not only that if you decrease the slag volume means the chances of flooding flooding would be low and you can blow more 
uh, volume in the blast furnace and that is one of the things which we had mentioned previously. So, that will help in blowing more uh, uh, blast furnace without getting it flooded. So, it is very important increase mechanical uh, strength uh, this is uh, by using agglomerate and as we had discussed before how you can uh, control the quality of this agglomerate and try to get, uh, reduce the thickness of the cohesive zone and should uh, um, uh, move to high temperature zone and that will again help to increase the coke throughput. Lower slag volume we already discussed. So, this is in the burden preparation and if we can increase the coke strength this is also very important because coke is taking part in many th things in the reaction and when the gases re reaction is occurring uh, that time actually coke uh, 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 is getting gasified. So, strength becomes down become uh, goes down it becomes more porous and near the dripping zone and the uh, tear it has to go with lots of attrition and harsh condition. So, uh, coke quality is very important if we can maintain that we can have a increased coke throughput. Similarly, permeability of the region this is uh, I do not have to emphasize we have devoted lots of time on this previously uh, which directly affect the productivity if permeability is not good then you will be having a uh, high pressure drop high resistance to the gas and you cannot blow uh, much volume into the blast furnace and that is ultimately is going to decrease your productivity. High top pressure is also one of the things we will discuss little bit uh, uh, again in this and that is high top, top pressure actually lead to uh, increase in uh, volume uh, blow volume in the blast, blast furnace. So, that certainly is going to increase the coke throughput and increase the productivity. Uh, you can of course, humidified uh, and oxygenated the blast furnace which we talked that will increase the flame temperature and other thing and probably will increase your coke throughput. So, and even the fuel injection. So, th this is the way we can increase uh, Q factor which ultimately increase the productivity of the blast furnace. Uh, so, these are the factor which affect the blast furnace productivity uh, many of them we have discussed uh, before, but I will touch upon uh, some of the important one here again. So, most of the parameter we have discussed in previous lecture, so not repeated again. The effect of some parameters are shown in this table. So, effect of percentage contents of plus 10 millimeter fraction of ore in the blast furnace. So, base condition is this. So, plus 10 millimeter in ore that is uh, 54 percent, if you increase that one to 71 percent. So, savings you can see how much 58, uh, these, uh, these are actual uh, uh, plant data. Uh, so, coke saving 58 kg per ton of hot metal if you increase to 88 or increase to 89 you can save almost 90 kg per ton of hot metal in this one. So, very important of uh, having a good size in the blast furnace um, or more in a way the uniform instead of mixed fuel dust, um, flu dust, flu dust also because so because you have already saved the coke and other thing and because you are having a more 10 millimeter size certainly fluid dust is going to decrease. So, it decrease for uh, 90 percent of um, uh, uh, millimeter size or uh, from 254 to 137 almost half 45 percent or so and that is a big reduction and that is a good saving especially in the gas cleaning system electrostatic precipitator and other things. Uh, performance increased from 100 to 110 percent of the price per net. Volume utilization meter cube per ton of hot metal is almost 0.83 point from 0.91 in 24 hours. 
and coke burning rate also decrease uh, per ton uh, ton per meter cube from 1.1 to 1.2. So, one can see the uh, uh, benefits of having a close size range um, this uh, burden and plus 10 millimeter in the size, size range having more percentage in it. So, over size also uh, now we said only 1 plus 10 millimeter now see the effect of different ore size. So, ore size in 2 or 3 categories indicate that all layers of one size are fed after a few hours of ore size 2 layers and so on. So, you do not mix the wider range size ore into one, but you separate them into 2 or 3 categories to narrow down the size range. So, that voided, voided does not deteriorate. This is actually quite important in practice actually it is very difficult to maintain one size um, due to various reasons. However, one thing can be done anyway screening is done you can uh, divide that uh, uh, charge into 2, 3 categories uh, and if you uh, do that way as we had seen before in the lecture the mix uh, charging layer and in the stock when they are mixing the permeability is reducing the void is reducing same thing is happening here. Because if you have a higher size of particle and then putting immediately the lower size one then they will settle in the interstices of the bigger particle and then will reduce the permeability of the charge and that will create a problem. So, this shows the the effect of that. So, if you are having a mix or everything mixed together percentage of CO2 in the top case is 11 percent which means you are probably having a more CO. So, it is not properly utilized coke rate is very high, but of course, these are the old data. Uh, so, coke rate is very high almost 1.2 ton per ton of hot metal. Um, of course, no increase in the output. Now, if we divide this one into two categories, two size categories, you can see the CO2 in top case has increased, indicating good utilization of CO, and even the coke rate has uh, decreased almost by 100 kg, and the expect output has increased almost by 9 percent. And if we divide further down into three categories, so more close range we are doing it, though we are having a same uh, material same charge only thing what we are doing we are dividing it into 3 category 3 different sizes and no, uh, narrowing the size range. If we do that way in 3 categories it is substantial increase in CO2 in the top gas which means much more utilization of the reduction potential of the gas and the coke rate has decreased again quite substan substantially um, almost from here to 220 kg and this has gone to 18 percent more than that um, output has increased. So, one can clearly see how the production uh, or how the ore size is affecting the product or output. So, these are few practical things which uh, uh, in the plasma furnace can be done to increase its productivity. And this uh, uh, figure again is emphasizing more about the uh, size uh, range of the uh, charge or here in ore size. So, iron output. Uh, you can see when ore size between 9 to 50 millimeter, though it is also a wide range, but still one can see um, and the percentage of coke size is this, your productivity with the coke size actually is increasing quite substantially. Now, if you increase this range instead of decreasing you are increasing. So, more uh, 
uh, what will happen the smaller particle will occupy the space in between the big particle and will reduce the permeability of the charge and that is where you can see the production is dec uh, decreasing though with coxide percentage is increased, but quite substantially it has decreased. And if this range is too high say 9 to uh, uh, 150 millimeter, then it is a very bad situation. Then certainly the permeability will deteriorate quite a lot in that case and certainly your ion output will decrease and it is decreasing substantially with increasing of the coke size in this range. So, that shows again the importance of controlling the um, charge size or adopting the procedure categorizing the charge size into uh, two or three categories and then um, feeding it into the blast furnace and that will uh, certainly increase the uh, productivity of the blast furnace. And when we talked about the size and other thing you can also see another thing from this as your size decreases you can see more heat transfer and mass transfer takes place especially below 10 millimeter it is sort of increase um, bit exponential way. Um, so, because the surface area is very high when the size is less than 10 millimeter the surface area is very high. So, heat and mass transfer certainly would be have a very high. However, the flow resistance, resistance to fluid flow will increase substantially because the surface area is very high that will also uh, uh, give a big resistance to the gas flow and this is not desirable at all. And if it is a big resistance you cannot put a um, more volume uh, into the blast furnace your productivity will is going to uh, decrease certainly. Uh, so, one has to optimize that thing. So, the, this is not a very good situation at all. So, it is a uh, particle size below 10 must be avoided and should not be fed uh, into the blast furnace. And if you look at the pl plus 20 mm particle size there is not much difference in the heat and mass time. of course, a little decrease it increases, but it is a it is not substantial. So, one can avoid uh, one can uh, avoid minus 10 millimeter and can go towards a little larger size particle and if you look at that way the productivity reach uh, to the maximum about somewhere when your particle size is about 45 millimeter or 4.5 centimeter and so that is where the highest productivity you have you can blow more air less coke rate and good uh, heat and mass transfer flow resistance is also less in that case. So, this shows how the effect of size um, or size affect the um, mass transfer, heat transfer and uh, fluid flow. Now, we will talk uh, another um, uh, parameter that is flame temperature which also affect the productivity of the blast furnace. So, very high flame temperature may be disadvantageous because production of large amount of SiO which so, as you have a high flame temperature, uh, we had discussed that uh, at high temperature SiO is formed when we were talking about the silicon transfer uh, reaction. So, production of large amount of SiO which lowers the voltage in the upper part by reoxidizing into SiO2 and depositing there. And we did mention about it that SiO is not that much useful one of course, it in create it is absorbed in the liquid metal it is increase the uh, silicon content uh, in the iron 
and another uh, one um, it uh, also travels upward which is the cooler region 1300 uh, like this and even less cooler then it reoxidizes from SiO2 which is solid it deposits in between the voids, reducing the permeability affecting the productivity adversely. Excessive volatilization of alkalis contributing towards the breakdown of burden and co. This also we discuss uh, in the starting uh, the bad effect of alkali and the alkali cycle at the lower part of the blast furnace temperature is high. So, they vaporize go up and um, they condense deposit there and uh, again come down with slag and the cycle keeps on and this uh, also contribute alkali deposits uh, into the charge in the breakdown of the burden. So, fines will generate. So, this is also not a very good thing. So, excessive temperature can uh, further um, deteriorate this situation. So, this uh, next figure shows ab uh, about this uh, thing uh, how these different things are there uh, reacting in the blast furnace. Um, so, this is a two year level. If you look at the coke size, so you will see that at the two year level the coke size is about 25 or 30 millimeter. So, you are feeding about 50 millimeter size um, um, in the starting and by the time it comes to the two year region it reduces almost 50 percent and even if it reduces 50 percent one has to make sure this coke because this is the harshest uh, condition in the blast furnace here is moving in the race where attrition all those things are happening it should be able to withstand all these things even though it has reduced to 50 percent in size. Um, so, uh, this shows most of the detection uh, of this uh, um, coke is occurring uh, from would say valley region to two year region rapidly and nothing little bit here, but nothing much in the thermal reserve joint. Same thing you can see the coke drum strength is quite fairly quite good until the stock line, but once it comes to cohesive zone in both uh, region it decreases, decreases, but it still uh, it has maintained near the two year level almost 86. <coughs> so, not that much decrease that is a good indication. So, coke uh, uh, it is almost 86 percent of its strength and reactivity of the coke uh, uh, increases from almost like 20, 20, uh, 20 25 percent to almost 40 percent somewhere in between reaches maximum and that uh, it could uh, think that uh, it is maintaining its reactivity which is important to produce uh, um, CO and if we look at the alkali production um, that is very low in, uh, at the top, but it is uh, comes down alkali percentage increases it becomes quite high in the um, middle zone um, almost in the belly region or cohesive and at the two year uh, then it start decreasing the region of maximum here because most of the vaporization of this alkali is occurring here which builds up goes up and condense and builds up there. So, there you have a maximum alkali content and it comes with the slag and again recirculating and deteriorating the quality of the burden. Uh, so, one has to be careful about the percentage of uh, alkali in the S. So, this is a typical distribution of these uh, coke sides, uh, coke strength, reactivity and alkali in the blast furnace from top to bottom. Um, and due to this uh, alkali input uh, as we said that because the permeability increase as you can see as the alkali input increases 
in kg per ton of hot metal, it will adversely affect the permeability of the burden and similar then the production will go down. So, productivity also decreases which is quite clear from that. So, alkali percentage should be kept minimum as much as possible um, in the uh, raw material. So, like a beneficiation other thing can take care of it. 